Hi guys, Paul and Thomas here. Hello. And this is a video that we've promised for quite some time. We're going to actually do a, a overview on the quads that Thomas used at the I.O. And specifically what gear he was running and, and, and what was based around the decisions you made and why you went down that path. The easiest one to start with is going to be really that spec quad, isn't it? Do you want to talk about that? Um, yeah. So what do you want to start with? Do you want to start with anything specific? specific? Um, yeah, we'll start with how the squad came to be. So the way this thing started was pretty much I wanted to do the spec race. I couldn't really get any of the frames in Australia except for the Hyperlite either. So um, I basically hopped onto the multi-GP website thing and started doing research on what frames they had. Um, came across this guy in the allowed uh, variants of quads. This was this? the oh, this is the MRM Reaper. Yep. Um, the bare frame itself is like 70 grams. So I knew it was going to be lighter than most of the other. I think about like 7 grams. But we actually had trouble getting this frame, didn't we? Yeah, we um, ended up getting Chad Kappa. Uh, to actually get the frame and bring it down and hand deliver it at the I.O. Um, so yeah, that was the frame sorted out. Then motors and ESCs, they were from Team Motor, so we've got the... We had a choice of Emax or um, Team Motor, and being sponsored by Team Motor, it was easy to go with Team Motor? Yeah, and I mean, as far as reliability and stuff goes with Team Motor, it's... We've used we're familiar with them, yeah, they that's, work well. Yeah, it works amazing, so... Uh, the... 2 to 6S F30 ESCs I used with the F43 2400KB. Um, you're limited to 2400KB for this, so this is, is either this or the Emax. Um, but that's good, uh, low end cornering, that kind of thing. Um, obviously being a little bit big too, you got a bit of top end. Um, and these ESCs really help to drive these motors. So um, what, what about the camera? You've done some fancy things there with the camera. I've got no idea what you yeah, actually, I never so, asked you why you do that. We'll start with how that came to be. It was pretty much because I couldn't get this frame, but I knew I was going to have to build it at the I.O. I wanted all the electronics done, and so I pretty much made the entire stack and everything um, on a piece of paper at home. So I like got a piece of paper, laid it out, realized this was about the same geometry as an Alien 5-inch, so... I literally got an Alien 5 inch, built this whole thing on a 5 inch Alien, hover tested it, um, built the stack, and so the reason why I did the 3D printed mount was because I wasn't sure how this whole thing was going to line up with the stack I made, so I thought if I just use my own mount then, I mean, it might be a pain in the butt to fit in, but it's going to work. So we 3D printed that, needed a way to secure the camera, so I used the Everholy cable ties. Um, they are amazing and they hold my camera at a perfect angle because... Cable ties are amazing, they are life. Is there and, anything else on it? Um, oh yeah, the flight controller. This is using an XSR F30. So it's a flight controller with a built-in FR Sky receiver. The reason why I picked this was because that's what we had at home. And so I was like, eh, you know, for reliability sake, I'm gonna try something I've never used before. <laughs> that was pretty much the story behind that. But um, look, it worked well. It um has a bit of trouble with processing, so I've got it down to, I think, 4 and 4 kilohertz instead of uh, my usual 8 and 2 or 8 and 4. So, um... But it still worked alright. It works perfectly, yeah, once you get the tune right. Um, it's just a slightly different the tuning The ESCs, were you running uh, BL Heli 32? No, these aren't 32, these are, um... These are BL Heli S. Yes, were you running D-Shot? Or were you I running Multishot? I actually can't remember. Okay. I'm pretty sure I picked D-Shot on this for reliability's sake, but... I do not know for sure. So we'll check that. We'll let you know. It'll be, it'll in pop description, up. Description, description, live in description. So I read the description. Everything, all the specs and details for these will be in the descrip description. <laughs> description. <laughs> in the description down below, down there. Yeah, so, um. And obviously TBS Antenna was what we had to run, wasn't it? Oh yeah, TBS Triumph we used. Um, they're just, they're reliable. They're great. They're amazing. And Thomas actually broke one recently. I did break one. I broke my first. Triumph. We should have sent it back to Trappy and said this is really like, you know. Yeah, poor. I mean, you know, it's like if you if you hit like <laughs> countless flags and gates, it shouldn't break ever. <laughs> ever, yes. But anyway. Yeah. Um, VTX, this is the Tramp HV. Uh, really good video transmitter. It's got the wand, which is pretty cool. You just, it was like, the first time we actually used the wand and it was actually, it was really convenient. I think it's one of those things you can't really... Um, describe what it's like unless you're actually using it and once you once you use it and you've just got your quads in, you just go bang 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 and they're all um the channels right change. Channel. it's, it's um, really quite convenient yeah and isn't it funny that we're talking about immersion when we take like part of it yeah well, oh, i mean good. they're both good companies they're so, good companies yeah exactly yeah um 
you know, they're obviously competition, but they're great. And competition is good because competition they make both make great products. So that was and running. You can like them both. Immersion. We didn't have any TBS ones, so we weren't going to run a TBS one on that one. So is that guy done now? We covered everything on this guy. Um, no props. Oh, okay. These are the Dell 5050Cs. We had the choice of this or the Avans. Um, I had used these already and like tested them, so I knew what to expect from these props. And I was like, yeah, I'm not going to risk trying something super new. I've already got a new flight controller in this. I'm going to stick with some props I know and trust. And these are a good prop, aren't they? And they're a great prop. Yeah, they're really, really stiff. Um, you Compared to these props here, the uh, HQ 5045 V3s, you get more top end on these. Your bottom end cornering is compromised compared to those, but it's not bad at all. It's um still great. Um, so yeah, definitely better for more top end heavy things, but I mean, for the bottom end stuff, it just gets like super, super buttery smooth. Um, because you could just kind of use an upper throttle range, so I was like, yeah, I know these work, and I am going to stick with them. So what about this guy here? Um, I also, done? if you're wondering what the camera plate's up there for, and why there's uh, none there, that's because that I broke off in a race, and you basically had to use all the carbon um, that came with the kit. And so this one had two carbon plates, and I didn't use them, so I still had to stick them on the quad somewhere, so I stuck them there. I should have probably double sided, like, just taped them onto here so there's no extra drag, but I was like, meh, this is going to have wings, because wings equal performance, right? So what we'll do now is cut to some race footage from this guy. It'll be the semi-finals for the spec race. Um, the finals were racing the same guys again, but we had four three crashes. Yeah, yeah, we had three crashes, and so um, it's a bit anticlimax. But so the one with the semi-final, full of climax. <laughs> so they will, we'll cut to that one. Where we are, Chris. Serial killers. All right. You're good, Joe Scully. Yeah, you're good too. All right, pilots, arm your quads. <laughs> stand by, stand by. I gotta let the giggle out. I just got stand by, stand by. All right, guys, no more giggling. This is serious. Money's on the line. Pilots, rearm your quads. As we go live on the tune in less than five. <laughs> Off to the races one more time as we get through that split S section and everyone through no restart and we are racing closer to cash. Someone is going up. In fact, three of them are going up into that money winning potentially position in our finale and everyone else gets one more life in a battle. First one who's excited for that rematch, that re-race as it were. AK numbers, our first one down as we bring Falcon our field X through Emacs. Falcon X, your leader, BMS Thomas in the number two spot. 32 bits of Gill in third as Brain Trains fourth. Drobot Racer in fifth. Jared in sixth. Phased FPV Brain in seventh. So starting with eight, down to seven. Drobot three laps to go. Falcon X, your leader after one. He's chicaning through those flags and he's already been passed Phased already. FPV BMS Thomas push himself. He's through the chicane and two more to go BMS for BMS Thomas, Thomas as he takes a lead eight. after two onto three. Falcon, Falcon X dropping the two spot. Jared's up into third. Brain Drains a spot closer than the four spot. Only eight tenths of a second back. Drobot and again, Racer another two point laps three. to go here for our field. Everyone Brain racing on lap number three and only 10 seconds separating Phase the seven FPV remaining in the air. That is tight racing as we are getting ready to roll through that carousel. White flag flying for BMS Thomas. He's onto his final lap to see if he's a guaranteed lock to run for some Emacs cash. Falcon X, the number two spot as we got Jared and Drobot Racer making a big move, running third and fourth, and it's going to come down to that checkered line on this one for that third, fourth. Brain Drain is within reach, only seven tenths of a second back in the number five spot, and we just lost somebody. That was 32 bits of gill, so he's going to get another pack in and a chance to get another life as we crown your winner. That is BMS Thomas going to our finale. Joining him is Falcon X and Jared. They are in our championship, and we get packs in again for Brain Drain. Drobot Racer, Phased FPV, 32 bits of gill and AK numbers. Let's go. Okay. So, frame. This is the Impulse RC Helix. It's um squished. So, yeah, these are our own squish. So, um. so, he's running custom plates on that. Uh, we've got our own custom plates that we run on that. Um, so, the geometry is slightly different. Uh, but you can run it in squish, X, and stretch. They've got stretch. They've got stretch, they've got true X. It's true X, too. True um, X is probably the way most people actually run it. Yeah. But um, I think people have been loving the stretch lately, too. So, yeah. Now, whatever, tickles whatever, you whatever you like, do that. Um, so I went for Squish. Um, this guy has been super, super reliable. I've had these for over a year now. Um, these are the motors doing about? These motors, even this frame actually, okay. has been running 
pretty much low. I think we've switched one ESC. Um, maybe a video transmitter on this one, I think. Oh yeah, we switched to FPV camera because the it had a bit lower tilt, so I use your camera. But um, that was about all it's been switched on this thing in its duration of its life. So um, what are we running? We're running Helix Frame standard kit, except for the uh, squish plates. The motors are F42 special editions. These were um made for team pilots yep. back in May of last year. And they were these are really really good. The F42 platform itself is probably my So these were over a year old when you used them. Yeah. Okay. They're just being the F42 platform is probably my favorite as far as feeling goes. Um that is isn't what I think of the motor as a whole. Um, I think it's probably one of the most successful motors out there in the sense of its uh, price point with respect to its power it gives, the control, um, and also how durable they are. They're kind of sitting at a really good weight range where the bearings tend to take crashes really, really well. So these are like low maintenance. Um, I can't say performance in a stick because the quad's like a stick and you get heaps of performance out of these. Um, they're not as powerful as so, the new F43s, but it's just that I've mean, had these for so long that I just love them. They're 2400kb? 2400 KV. So why did you go 2400 KV? Why didn't you go 2600 or 2750? Okay, well 2750 didn't exist for these yet. I That's had why a... I didn't do 2750. <laughs> there you go. Um, 2750, I did have a, another quad running them. Um, and the bigger team motor ESCs, actually not bigger, they're like the same as these. But um, the reason why I didn't use that was because I trust this setup. It is just burn stock reliable. It's quite efficient. I didn't know what to expect from the multi-GP courses. So these with the 2400 KV, they're fairly efficient for the race frame. Um, you also get heaps of bottom end control. So it's like um, when you're trying to learn something new, like say a gravity gate that you've never done before, um, opting for it's worth control mentioning, TV. he actually learned to do gravity gates while in the US at the IO, so he hadn't done one before. Yeah, and so like this trying helps. to run high KV was just, for me it was a nightmare because I'd have to get used to the quad first and then trying to learn the track at the same time. This. It's like the control factor's already there, so you can just focus on learning and trying to get as much performance out of your, the track and out of your quad. So what about props? Possible. Props, these are the 5045 V3s, a HQ prop. Um, I'm still using these all the time. We've had them since the start of the year and they've been amazing. They're pretty much... Um, the idea behind these is to be like a really balanced prop, so you've got a um, good bottom end, good top end, good cornering. Um, it sits kind of between the Racecraft 5051s and like your old Rotorite Edition 5x4x3s where you've got almost the top end of your Racecrafts but not quite. You've almost got the cornering of the Rotorites but not quite. It's um just this kind of middle ground prop that can do everything. It can compete in a straight line, compete in corner. Um, and then if you've got a track that's got a balance of the two, then these things dominate. Flight controller VTX. Okay, these are both the ones that come with the Helix. Um, I mean, they're built for each other, they're built for this frame, so it is just all integrated and easy to work with. Um, yeah, it's just, it's really reliable. The video out of this is like cleaner than anything you could ever get. So um, these are the Icon 30 Amp 2-6S ESCs. They're really, really reliable, pro provide heaps of power uh, more than the 4S ones. So that's why I really like them for their reliability, uh, power delivery, all that kind of thing. Um, pretty much these have been, I'd say, our most reliable ESCs that we've had. Um, we've been using them the longest out of other ESCs we've got. I'm liking so the, that's um, why. the new uh, Tim uh, Tim Matter ones. The, the F35s, the D-Shot. Even the F30, 32 bits oh, yeah, are really good they're too. they're really... That These is, are the 30, that's what I just said. 32, yeah. Oh, the forest ones. The forest they're ones. They've been they're really, really good. good. Um, if you're after a smaller ESC, they're a really good ESC. There's no two ways about it at all. Yeah, they're like... I reckon for a lighter build too, they'd be nuts. Because is that can, what you put on my quad that you bought for me? That's the one I put in the quad. Yeah, basically, so I could test them and see how they were. And they were surprisingly good. They can drive, like, your bigger motors. That's using the uh, F43 2600 KVs. And it drives them perfectly fine. Um... So, for a forest rated ESC, those things are nuts. Um, camera, obviously Foxy, the same as the other one. Yep, so HS1177. Um, we've been using these for ages. I'm really liking the Arrow V3s. Um, so I've been using them a bit lately too, but these are really good. Uh, with a 2.1mm lens. Um, it's just a nice, for me, a nice balance in field of view. and. Good. Batteries on the other one, you ran the... Uh... Tattoo Arline 1550s. That's what you have to run for that one with the. Um... Yeah, it was them with the Thunder Powers. And um, I mean, Tattoo, we just knew it was a good brand. We could get them, so. When we had to buy some. So that was, I think that were the only batteries we could actually buy that were um, approved for the spec. So we bought those. 
And on this guy, what batteries were you running on this guy? This guy used the Dogcom 1300s and the 1500s. Um, the 1300s is what I actually raced with. Um, the 1500s I used in practice a little bit. But um, the 1300s are really nice. They give you heaps of power. Um, they're lightweight or fairly lightweight. They're like three grabs lighter than a graphene. But um, they've got heaps of power. Um, you lose your fiberglass protection on them. So if you like hit battery first with an underslung battery, it's a bit difficult. But um, if you were to hit battery first, they will pop. Yes. But um, yeah, don't do that. And they're amazing. Anything else we need to cover? Um, oh yeah, I'm using an Impulse RC battery strap. These are a <laughs> must for <laughs> performance. Um, if you don't use them, then you will lose like three or four, maybe even 12 seconds on some tracks of time. So yeah, there you go. So, oh, sorry, so gain. That, that's the trick, is it? Yeah, use Impulse RC, the Impulse RC battery strap. Just trust me, do that. Instant performance gain, guaranteed. It's crazy, um, you know that, don't you? Am I? Yeah. I didn't know. And what we'll do is cut to the finals of the World Cup race. Yeah, this guy had an epic battle um, for its last race that it's uh, actually raced in officially. So it had a good, good race. So we'll cut to that. Yeah. Guys, the multi GP hole shot rule will be in play. The winner, the title, the fastest in the world. Good luck. Arm your quads. Let's let her rip on the tone in less than five. Here we go, I'm excited right now. Everyone in monitors, around monitors, inside of our flight line as we rock out. McGap is, I think your leader, no. We're gonna look up on top. BMS Thomas is pushing himself up. Now we're in process of elimination. That is gonna be Young Rock Sun. He is shaken, and maybe he can power out of it. I don't know, it does not look so good. So he gets 500 bucks and a send off. And now look at this, there goes Jared. So he gets a thousand bucks, and now we're gonna battle it out for two and a half laps with your leader BMS Thomas coming around as McGap is in the number two spot still with another couple of laps to go BMS Thomas with about a three second lead with two laps to go one of them getting 1500 one of them getting two thousand dollars and right now McGap is waiting for that time to get go time and now look at this we got McGap up in front as we know that is actually we got Jared back up in the air. That messed me up a little bit. Let's go through the, yeah, look at this. He's back up, guys. We still have another lap in a bit. Now McGap is your leader for sure. Around onto the final lap, but BMS Thomas actually was ahead of him by two tenths of a second. It literally is coming down to this final one to see who's getting a little bit. Look at the hurdle section. It's in stereo right now. BMS Thomas is leading. There we are. McGap has got him in his sights right here. McGap is still pushing up. McGap is your leader here, but they still have the dive gate section. McGap with a better line like this. Oh no, Thomas is trying to push for it. This is anyone's game. Thomas is now leading ahead of McGab. Let's get around to that gate. BMS Thomas is your winner! Can I answer that now? Hello, we're just doing a video. Can I call you back? You on the train or not yet? Okay, alright then. Talk to you soon. Bye. Anyway, thanks for taking Anyway, thanks for taking the time to watch this video and we'll catch you guys in the next one. See ya.